Micah, the Levite, and the tribe of Dan. In our last story, we learned about Samson's weakness for Delilah, leading him to reveal the secret to taking away his strength. Samson was bound and captured by the Philistines, and they gouged out his eyes. Samson, with one final push with the strength of God, toppled the Philistine temple and killed 3,000. In this story, we learn about the dark ages of Israel, where everybody did what was right in their own eyes. We follow the life of Micah, a man struggling to find peace, and the tribe of Dan, a tribe struggling to find home, inspired by the Book of Judges. Hello, I'm Jack Graham, pastor of Prestonwood Baptist Church in the Dallas area with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In yesterday's episode, we heard the tragic but redemptive conclusion of Samson's life story. His failure wasn't final, and God gave him another chance to finish well in victory. His sin and his pride got the better of him. He was captured and tortured and mocked. But in the end, Samson made things right with God and gave himself in a sacrifice to destroy 3,000 Philistine idol worshipers in their pagan temple. Today we'll hear as Israel once again descends into darkness, given over to their own desires and moral relativism, where each person did whatever was right in their own eyes. We'll hear the story of Micah and his moral and spiritual confusion, and we'll learn about the tribe of Dan, their search for a home, and how one man's actions led to a whole community of idolaters. It is a story about how something small can grow into a fire that consumes and destroys everything in its path. And it is once again a story of God's patience and undying love for his children. So let's listen now to today's reading. The state of Israel was descending into madness. All tradition, devotion, and prayer was diluted by the worship of false gods. All sense of right and wrong was eroded by years of small compromise, and the Israelites found themselves in an apathetic daze. It was truly a different form of captivity. Instead of being chained by an opposing nation, they were shackled by their own faithlessness. During that time, there was a man who lived in the hill country of Ephraim, named Micah. Micah was a confused but honest man. One day he stole 1,100 pieces of silver from his mother. When his mother cursed the silver because it was stolen, Micah quickly returned it. When Micah returned the silver to his mother, she melted it down and made a carved image. I dedicate this to the Lord and to my son, she said. So Micah erected a shrine for his carved image and placed it there with other household gods. There... On the hills of Israel, Micah began to build his own little temple for false gods to mingle with the God of Israel. Micah, impressed with his exploits, appointed his son as priest over his household. Micah's debased practice revealed a sickness that plagued the hearts of Israel. Micah paid no attention to God's law to not create any false gods. Instead, he nodded in approval at the wonderful work he had done. Little did he know... He was creating a temple of straw, waiting to be blown away by the wind. A young man was passing through the hill country near Micah. He was a Levite from the family of Judah. Levites had a home for themselves, serving God and the people of God. But this man wanted to forge his own way and do what was right in his own eyes. Micah spotted the young man from afar and brought him near. "'Where do you come from?' Micah asked." I am a Levite of Bethlehem. I have come from far to find my own place and forge my own path, the young man responded. Come in and stay with me a while, Micah said. I am in need of a priest over my shrine. I will pay you ten pieces of silver a year and provide you with a home and food. The Levite agreed, and the two of them worshipped their idols as well as the God of Israel. Micah was convinced that having a Levite in his home would bring him blessings from God, for in his mind, title was all that mattered. He would be terribly mistaken. There was no king and no judge to rule over Israel. Each man and woman wrote their own laws and lived by their own desires. 
The tribe of Dan, instead of bravely seizing the land God had intended for them, shrunk away and lived without a home. So they wandered in search of an inheritance. One day the tribe of Dan sent out spies to scour the country and search for land to conquer. On their travels they stumbled upon the house of Micah. When they saw that there was a Levite among them, the men were curious. Who brought you here, they asked. What is your business here? Micah has hired me as his priest, so I dwell here, he said. The Danites perked up with curiosity. Levites were rare, and the chosen priests of God. The people of Israel craved any sort of favor from God they could get, for their interaction with him was few and far between. Please, ask God if we will succeed in finding land for ourselves, the Danites requested. Go in peace, the Levites said. The Lord will watch over you. So the Danites left with confidence. The men traveled far and came to the land of Laish that was inhabited by the Sidonians. The Sidonians were a quiet people. They kept to themselves and tended to the fields around them. Children played in the grass while their mothers and fathers farmed and tended to their herds. The Danites saw that the land was rich and the Sidonian people were weak. Like a wolf licking its chops at a helpless lamb, the Danites planned their attack. Six hundred men from the tribe of Dan rose against the Sidonians with weapons of war and hatred. They marched towards the hill country and passed by the home of Micah once again. The five men that spoke to the Levite approached the home with their weapons while Micah was gone. They burst through the door and took Micah's shrine, his carved image, and his household gods. Then they turned to the Levite. He cowered in the corner, afraid of what they might do to him. The five men approached him with their swords in hand. Slowly one of them brought his sword to the Levite's chest and said, Tell me, what is better? A sly grin arose from his face. To be a priest to one man or to a whole tribe? It took a moment for the Levite to understand what the man was saying, but when he did, his frown was replaced by a smile. The men embraced and laughed. The Levite packed his things and left with the six hundred men, leaving Micah's home ransacked and emptied of all its gods. Micah discovered that his possessions had been taken, so he gathered surrounding men to ambush the tribe of Dan. They ran towards the six hundred men, sending the children out in front of them so Dan would not attack first. Using children as a human shield, Micah spoke with a booming voice filled with anger. How dare you take what is mine? What is wrong with you that you would take my gods and my priest? He shouted. The men of Dan turned around and stared at Micah and his small army of children and villagers. They posed no threat to them. Shut up, they yelled. Turn around or you will lose your life along with the lives of your household. The people of Dan turned their backs to him and walked away. Micah, now cooling down from his rage, realized that he was no match for them. Ashamed and stripped of his false sense of holiness, Micah wandered back to his broken home, alone. The sun was setting, and the people of Dan looked upon the land of Laish. The city was quiet. A subtle whistle of the wind blew through the valley. The tribe of Dan descended down the hills into the valley. They passed each home quickly, and struck down each member of the city with the edge of the sword. Not a scream could be heard for their swords swung swiftly and in total surprise. After the men had struck down every soul with their blades, they set the city on fire for good measure. The flames illuminated the skies. Dan rebuilt the city and inhabited it. They named the city Dan, and their families thrived in their new home. They set up the carved images they stole from Micah and set them in the house of God. What began as small idolatry for Micah turned into the idolatry of an entire tribe of Israel. The entirety of Dan knelt down to the silver image that was formed by Micah's mother. And their descent into more madness continued. God looked upon them, still loving and still patient. He remained waiting for a moment to deliver his people once again. We begin today's reading with Micah, a young man in Ephraim, and right out of the gate, our protagonist admits to theft. He seems to be convicted by his own conscience when he hears his mother curse the silver that was stolen. 
So he tells his mother that he had stolen it and gives it back to her. Micah's mother then melts some of the silver and has it turned into a graven image, an idol, which she dedicates to God and her son. Micah, in turn, places the image in a shrine in his house filled with other religious symbols and household gods. Clearly, the culture of Israel has gone off the rails. Micah and his mother give us a picture of this syncretism, a blending of different religions, the dedication of things to God that do not worship him and him alone. It is a picture of the culture all around them. And we then hear these words in Judges 17, 6. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. There are perhaps no more dangerous words for a society than that last sentence. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That is a recipe for disaster. This is a recipe for judgment. That is where Israel finds itself, looking not to God for governance and guidance or morality, but to whatever seemed right to every person. It was moral relativism. With his newly erected shrine, Micah searches for a way to legitimize his worship. And a traveling Levite seems to be just the answer. Micah assumes that this man of a priestly lineage has the right title to bring him the blessings of God. Together, Micah and his priests engage in idolatry, clearly violating God's law. But as we've already seen established, Israel wasn't looking up for guidance or governance. They were looking around and looking to themselves. We then meet the tribe of Dan, a tribe living without a home because they lacked the courage to seize the land God had given them. They wandered around looking for land to take as their inheritance. And when they came upon Micah's household, they met the Levite priests and sought the Lord's favor from him. The priest told them to go in peace, that God would watch over them. This filled them with boldness, and they left in search of land. They traveled far away and found a land that they could easily take, and as they marched out toward the conquest, they passed by Micah's home, entered it, and stole the carved image of silver and the other gods. And then they called the Levite priest to join them. He gladly left for what he thought was greener pastures. When Micah discovered the theft, he assembled an army to take back what was his, but his efforts were futile. He was no match for the Danites who marched on into the land they wanted, killed its inhabitants, and burned the city. They rebuilt the city, built a house of God, but filled it with other gods, including Micah's silver idol. How crazy does this seem that these people were fighting over false gods and carved images? It's a tragedy. God's people have sinned and strayed so far from him that he was considered just another among all these false gods. Let's pray together. Lord, we know the dangers of moral relativism and any faith that looks to anyone else but you. We know that we are to guard our hearts, O God, and not build idols in our hearts or worship anything or anyone but you. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And we know, according to John 14, 6, that no one comes to you, O God, the Father, except through Jesus. And we pray in his name. Amen. Thank you for listening today to the Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas, pastor of Prestonwood Baptist Church. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. And if you enjoy this podcast, share it with others, people that you love and care about, people who want to know the Bible, help them understand the Bible as well. This podcast can make a huge difference in someone's life. If you want more resources on how to tap into the power of Jesus Christ in your life, then be sure to visit jackgraham.org.